Okay, guys, I saved English for last today. I don't know if this is the order that you'll do it at home, but I saved English for last today because I'm really not comfortable teaching the writing process through a video, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Um, the positive spin on this, I guess, is that the writing process is always the same. First you plan, draft, I can't see, um, revise, proofread, and publish. And we've been doing that all year with every writing piece that we've done. But the opinion piece is a little bit different. Your targets are, I can identify the audience and purpose of an opinion paragraph. I can participate in brainstorming reasons for an opinion. I can write opinion words to plan an opinion paragraph. I can write transition words to plan an opinion paragraph. And I can plan an opinion paragraph about a book. Now, I scanned in yesterday this. And you can use this for your planning before you write your plan in your text. I'm going to do an example on the whiteboard, but I'm going to read to you first the book that I chose. And the title of it is Georgia Music. And the author is Helen V. Griffith. The pictures are by James Stevenson. I've had this book for many, many years. But the first time I ever heard it, I was in college and I was taking a child lit class where we read all different genres of children's literature. And my teacher in that class actually read this book to us. And it was right after my grandfather had passed away and I actually cried after she read it. So I hope that I can get through reading this out loud to you without getting upset because it reminds me so much of my own grandfather. An old man lived by himself in a cabin near the railroad tracks in the state of Georgia. He spent his summers doing odd jobs and watching the trains go by and thinking about old times. But as soon as it was spring, he put on his straw hat, pulled his hoe out from under the porch, and chopped out a good-sized patch of garden beside the cabin. Then all summer long, he worked in that garden, growing collards and melons and black-eyed peas. One summer, the old man's daughter took the train from Baltimore to Georgia for a visit, and she took her own daughter along with her. After a few days, she had to get back to Baltimore, but she left the girl there with her grandfather for the whole long summer. The old man never said how he felt about that, but he didn't seem to mind. The girl didn't mind either. She liked it right away. She liked the hot garden patch with its green rows of seedlings, and she liked the little cabin that shook when the trains thundered by. When she stopped being shy of her grandfather, she liked him too. She followed him around the garden while he worked, and sometimes she stepped on the little green seedlings, but if the old man noticed, he never said anything. He found her an old straw hat and a hoe that wasn't too heavy and showed her how to chop weeds. It was hard work, and at first she was clumsy at it, but the old man said he didn't know how he'd ever done without her. They would work all morning, their hoes going chink-chink up and down the rows, while a mockingbird flew from fence post to fence post, flapping his wings and singing noisy songs to them. Sassy old bird, the man would say, and the girl would say it too. Sassy old bird, and they would look at each other and laugh out loud. At noon, they sat under a tree and ate their lunch, and then they would lie back on the grass and rest. The old man would pull his straw hat over his face, and the girl would make a pillow out of hers and lie looking up at the leaves and the sky. It was so quiet that they could hear the leaves touching each other and the bumblebees bumbling and the crickets and grasshoppers whirring and scratching. And every now and then the man would nod his head under his straw hat and say, Now that's music. 
Then they would go to sleep under the tree while the summer sounds went on and on in their ears and in their hearts. In the evenings, the two of them sat out on the rickety porch steps and the old man played tunes on his mouth organ. He knew a lot of songs and he taught the words to the girl so she could sing with the music. The old man said he was really playing for the crickets and the grasshoppers because they made music for him in the daytime. He said they liked it and the girl thought so too. At night, they went to sleep, hearing the katydids and the tree frogs and the chuckwell widows singing and singing and some nights the mockingbird called nearly all night long. Then the girl would smile to herself and whisper, Sassy old bird, and if you don't know what a mouth organ is. It, to me, it just looks like a harmonica. When September came, the girl didn't want to go home, and she could see that her grandfather was sorry, too. Her mother promised that she could come back next summer, and they had to be satisfied with that. But the next summer wasn't the same. The girl and her mother knew something was wrong as soon as they saw the cabin. Weeds were growing through the steps and a wild rose bush had almost taken over the porch. They found the old man sitting in a chair with a quilt over his lap and his eyes were closed. I ain't sick, he told them, just mighty tired. But they closed up the cabin and took him back with them to Baltimore. The girl knew he was sicker than he said, or he would never have gone. There was nothing wrong with their home in Baltimore, but the old man wasn't happy there. He sat in a chair looking worried and sad, and the girl knew he was thinking of the old cabin in the garden that didn't get planted that year. She tried to talk to him, but nothing seemed to interest him, and it just wasn't like it had been in Georgia. One day, the girl got out the old man's mouth organ and put it in his hand. Play me a tune, granddaddy, she said, but he just held the mouth organ in his hand and looked at it. The girl took it back and put her lips on it and blew, and when the old man heard the sound, his eyes opened wide and he looked right at her, something he never did anymore. So she made more sounds come out of the mouth organ, and then she began blowing in and out, finding out how it worked, and at last she was able to play a little tune on it. Did you like that, granddaddy, she asked, but she already knew that he did. From then on, the girl sat with her grandfather every day and practiced playing the mouth organ until she began to be good at it. She taught herself all the old songs her grandfather had played for her, and she played them over and over. One day, after she had played everything she knew, she found herself playing a different kind of music and making up brand new songs, except it wasn't exactly music, and they weren't real songs. They were the sounds she remembered from that Georgia summer, cricket chirps and tree frog trills and bee buzzes and bird twitters. She shut her eyes and swayed back and forth, and she could almost feel the hot sun on her back and the hoe handles in her, handle in her hands. And for a while, it was like being right back in Georgia. Then the old man gave a little chuckle, and the girl heard him whisper to himself, Sassy old bird. So she said it too. Sassy old bird. And then the girl and her grandfather looked at each other and laughed out loud. And there's that mockingbird. Okay, so I have a lot of favorite books, but that one holds a very special place in my heart, and that's why I chose it. So I want to talk about what you need to do in planning your opinion piece. So if you look on page um, 309 in your text, it says, plan, get ready to write by thinking how you feel about a book. Use opinion words in your topic sentence and ending sentence. Use transition words to begin some sentences. And the opinion words are at the bottom and the transition words are at the bottom. And remember, when you're writing 
an opinion piece, your topic sentence, and your closing sentence are usually the same. They're just going to kind of mimic each other. Now, hold on just a second. Because it was a little bit dark. I turned on the overhead light. Maybe that'll help me be able to see, but then there's a glare on the board. Okay. The purpose for telling someone your opinion is to encourage someone to read the book or to learn something from the book. The audience for your opinion paragraph is the person who reads the paragraph, the person you want to read this book that you've chosen. Remember, we use our words kindly and we're going to tell some facts, but we're also going to give our opinion and the facts will back up our opinion. In this lesson, you will learn how to plan an opinion paragraph about the book um, that you choose. Now, on page 309 is Haiku on Your Shoe, and Miss Millett was never able to find that one online to order, but we've also seen that when we wrote, um, was it the friendly letter? It was in one of the writings. They used that as an example. So we're just going to look at their model, and then I'm going to walk you through doing a planning of my book. So... The first thing that you do when you write your opinion piece about the book is write the book title. And remember, because we don't write in italics, we're going to need to underline the title. And we're also going to make sure that we capitalize the important words. On the second line, you write the author's name. Now, because this is your planning piece, remember, you are not expected to write in complete sentences. You can write phrases. We don't write in complete sentences until we write our draft. The first sentence, now the title and the author are in the brown section. So if you're doing the underline, those two parts would be brown. The opinion is green because that's like your topic sentence and that's always your green sentence. They use the introductory words in my opinion. Well, then they wrote their topic sentence that gives their opinion. In their opinion, this book shows how to be a friend. And then they use some transitional words and they give their, um, I'm not going to lie, I can't see it. They give their reasons. They give their reasons. Okay, so the reasons are like your details. So they said first, and their reason is, thought about how Taco felt. They did not use a transitional word in the next box, and you don't always have to use a transitional word. But their second reason was, was always kind to him. Now remember, they're given reasons about why this book shows how to be a friend. Now the last one is your detail or fact that supports your two reasons. So they put, for example, asked him to his house. That is citing the evidence from your book to back up these two reasons that you gave that this book shows how to be a friend. And then their conclusion, the opinion words are, I think, and then their ending sentence is, be a friend like Jeremy. So, shows how to be a friend and be a friend like Jeremy kind of mimic each other. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do select your book and then think through your plan. Your first sentence is going to be your topic. Now, when you choose the topic, it can be many different um, things. For example, it could be that you're telling me why this is your favorite book. It could be that you're telling me about your favorite character in a book. It could be your favorite part in the book. It could be the big idea of the book. Like I believe in on this page where they're discussing haiku on your shoe, shows how to be a friend is probably the big idea of the book. You could also 
discuss your favorite setting in your book, or you could discuss the problem and solution in your book. You don't just have to tell me the big idea of the book. You can choose some small part of the book to tell why that is your favorite part. I want, in your writing, for you to give me two details why, and then I want one explanation where you cite evidence from your story. Okay? So I want two details as to why this is your favorite part, your favorite character, your favorite book. Give me two details why, and then one explanation that explain that cites evidence from the story. So what I'm going to do is turn this light back off so you don't see that shining in your eyes. And then we're going to walk through this together. All right, so the first thing that you have to do is write the name of your book. And the name of my book is Georgia Music. The author of my book is Helen V. Griffith. Now, here's where I start my writing. I'm going to use the opinion words in my opinion, or the opening words. And you've got a box on page 309 that gives you some options for your opinion words. I just chose in my opinion. And then I'm going to give a reason or a detail as to why it's my favorite. And my reason is that this book shows how people care about others. And remember, in your planning, you do not have to write complete sentences. Now, I need some reasons or details that explain why my opinion is this. Well, first, one thing that tells me that this book shows how people care about each other is that Grandpa lets her visit. It never tells us whether he wanted her to stay or not, but he lets her stay the whole summer. And then my second detail, I put also, while he was letting her visit, he taught her many things. Okay, now, I've given you two details that show why my opinion is that this book shows how people care about each other. Now, my reason. For example, for example, he um, shows her how to enjoy nature. Now, that is not a complete sentence, but I know what I mean. So when I get ready to draft, I'm going to know what I'm doing with the words enjoy nature. And then you're closing. Use another opinion set of words. I put I believe. And then again, my opinion is that this book shows how families love one another. Okay? So, on 310, you're going to do your plan. You can use this that I sent through yesterday as a rough draft for your plan if you want to. And then you can put your actual plan onto the page. Now that's as far as we're going to go this week. When we come back from spring break, we're going to work on our draft, our revisions, and draft revision proof republish. 
and we may try to combine a couple of those steps, but I need you to choose a book. I need you to either do a rough draft plan but, or this or both or at least this. What I need is a plan. However that looks to you, if you don't feel like you need to use this drafting page, then don't use the drafting page, but I need the page 310 completed, okay? It's not as bad as it seems. I did do some research because writing is not my most favorite thing. You guys know I love some math, and it has been a while since I've taught um, writing, but when I did teach opinions, we did what was called Oreo, opening, which is your opinion, reasons, explanation, and opinion, Oreo. This is your opinion, these are your reasons, this is your explanation, which is citing the evidence, and then this is your opinion again. Oreo. Opinion, reasons, explanation, opinion. All right? Reasons that support your opinion, the explanation that explains your reasons. Cite your evidence under explanation. Pull something from the book that supports what your reasons are. Okay? It won't be bad. Don't try to overthink. You know, sometimes Miss Millett has that problem. She tries to overthink. But don't overthink. But please do your best. Choose a book that you really enjoy, a book that you would like for others to read, and then go through your planning. And do not lose page 310. We will need it after the break. All right? I look forward to seeing the books that you chose and I can't wait to read your opinion paper when we get done. All right, thanks guys.